This is my early 1950s Arvin 17 inch standard television set. Um, what its issues is, is um, the previous owner tried to power it up and tried to run it after it had been damp for a while and he fried the flyback. So today we're going to see if I can substitute in not the proper flyback and see if we can get a picture of some kind or high voltage or anything other than a fire. So first thing we're going to want to do is pull the chassis out of this big wooden box so that we can get a good look at everything. You can see the set is now out of the big wooden box. Um, unfortunately, there is a what is it, horizontal line burned into the CRT. I tested it, the CRT earlier. It isn't very good. It's pretty weak. It'll make a picture, just not a good one. So I've got to find a replacement. Uh, someone did recomb the speaker here, which is pretty interesting. It is a field coil. I need to fix this. Um, it is a field coil speaker, so it has to be plugged in for the set to get B plus and to function. Now I'll spin it around and show you the back. Here you can see the back of the television. It's where you hook up your in your antenna input. You've got your high voltage cage here, you've got the back of the CRT, focusing device, ion trap, yoke. See on the side of the picture bulb here that is losing the DAG coating on the outside. So I'm gonna have to get some of that. Um, you can see it is a power transformer set. It has a lot of vacuum bulbs. Um, now let's see if we can get the, see, let's take off the high voltage cage and take a look at the uh, flyback. To get the high voltage cage off, it is just a couple screws. One there. It's missing two screws on it and it's probably missing more. So it's got the two screws there. Then it just slides out like so. Now you can see looking down into the high voltage cage, you get your flyback transformer. I think that's your horizontal output, your rectifier. I think that's another horizontal tube, RCA. Oh, door knob capacitor. Some tape, it's falling off. Uh, you get a fuse down here and another paper capacitor that has broken on one side, or you have to solder that back up. And I think I'm just gonna replace it. I have a couple of those. Um, so take a look here. I have a spare flyback that's new, and it looks very, very similar to that one. I know they can be different internally, but they look the same. And that's enough for me to see if I can't put this in there and see if we get something resembling light on the screen or a picture or anything, really. So now let's replace that 2200 microfarad capacitor. So replacing capacitors is really as simple as just snipping out the old I always save these waxy paper capacitors because someday, I don't know when, but I'm going to make a candle out of the wax. And it's going to be the worst smelling candle of all time. But I'm going to need a lot of wax and that's a lot of waxy paper capacitors. So pull that back. See here that probably not the original fuse. I think that might have been what those are. The capacitor goes to these outer two lugs here. So we've got our replacement here. Um, I'm trying to see. It's 
just that like that. Maybe need to heat it up a little. I think that's all that needed. Now we get some solder and just solder them up. I reckon that's good enough. Now to package this all up in a way where it won't short on anything. I'm just gonna cut those off. They don't need to be there. Just like that. Next thing we're gonna wanna do to prep is just try and get everything kind of out of the general area of the flyback as we can. 60A horizontal output. Just so we can actually like see what we're doing. Can't get this out. And then we gotta take pictures and start removing stuff from like the back here and paying attention to how they go. Now let's see if we can get the rest of the high voltage cage away so we can get to the bottom side of some stuff. So there's a screw there, screw back here. Another screw. Screw right down with the yoke plug. that so now that we've gotten it loose kind of maneuver it in such a way you can get to some of the stuff on the bottom so I think what I'm gonna do now is tip the chassis on its side so we can get to stuff so you can see here our prop I've propped up the chassis and I've propped up the high voltage cage, but offset slightly so we can see stuff up under here. Someone has coated this all in stuff to keep it from doing stuff it probably shouldn't. Making it all very stiff. Yeah, it's not, it's not great. Um, but what we want to do, I think I'm just going to cut those. 
the leads going to the fly back to here. I'll just cut them and strip it and then just to get the fly back out. The new one has those, so next step now is to remove the two screws in the bottom here. Just got to remove the bottom screw here. Out it comes. So what I did is I went through and marked on this transformer using the schematic for the TV and the schematic for this transformer to figure out what each of the terminals on it do compared to the original crusty one. Now what we're going to do is reinstall it. And get everything hooked up so it's gonna go in pretty much the same as the other one went out now what we're gonna want to do is figure out how to attach these here to these here Just like that there, I've got the new wires installed. So now what we're gonna do is put the chassis back how it was, put all the high voltage cage back, and then connect the wires in the back of the flyback. Now let's try it. I've also got my high voltage detector. Uh, it's just a thing, a rod that's grounded so that I should get an arc off of anything it touches that's high voltage because I don't have an actual probe so it's impossible for me to get an actual measurement at the moment. So now let's try it out and see if it'll make a picture. Yep. We did get, we just got high voltage and then it started arcing. I didn't see what it was arcing. I'm gonna check the camera. Maybe I didn't do something right. That, that's crazy. So I think that'll be it for what will probably be part one of this. Um, we have a full raster. It reaches both top and bottom of the screen, left and right. And the sound works. But the issue is, is that the sound isn't on the channel it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be four. It's on five, coming through five and six. So there's an issue there. Uh, obviously, we don't have video on this screen. Uh, so, and I think that what the issue might be the video output tube tested that um the picture tube is not great as you can see that's max brightness and it's still not very bright uh, but the horizontal is on frequency so we have that again full vertical deflection so yeah i think that'll be it for this one